Hey everyone, Pete here. Welcome to this introductory and getting started video with the Root Controller ISO. This is the third revision and we're going to go over its details and how to get started. Stay tuned. So, first of all, what is the Root Controller ISO or Isolated? It is a six axis, fully isolated motion controller running at a fork of gerbil. In this instance, we've got Fluid NC pre-flashed onto it and we've got gerbil how in the pipelines. So please check out the GitHub page for base configurations for give the given firmwares. From default or from the factory, it will become pre-programmed with Fluid NC at the moment and it might be outdated, so we'll always check their GitHub for the latest. So if we start looking, our, looking around the unit, we can see we have got some denotations of little islands around the card. These show isolation areas. The card split up into multiple different isolated areas to help noise immunity and to allow stuff to operate at different voltages, etc. So if we start off on this side, we can see we've got a little bubble around the USB port. The root controller ISO has a fully isolated USB interface. So you can plug your laptop in or your desktop in via the USB port and it's completely electrically isolated from here uh, and only data passes through. So if you want to talk to the root controller via the USB port, you will need to power the device externally and that's through this port here. Moving a bit further along, we've got an SD card. This is particularly handy to put uh, any repetitive jobs, macros or any other files on here. This is accessible via the web page or via the terminal. Up here we've got a Wi-Fi antenna, so we can connect this to your home network and control the machine that way. We can load jobs, files and control the machine that way. It also does work with Bluetooth, um, although I've not, I don't particularly use it, I use the Wi-Fi and it works great. Moving a bit further along, we have now got our second isolated bubble. This is where power comes in for the unit and as well as has all the end stops or inputs. These inputs are electrically isolated to the rest of the card, so that is to provide noise immunity for any long wires that might be running, running across your machine. And these provide the same potential that the input supply has going in. So you can see here the root controller will take anywhere from three to 36 volts, and that voltage is applied to the positive pins on all of these inputs. We'll cover inputs in a bit more detail and there's a lot more detail on the wiki linked below. <coughs> Moving a bit further along, we've got two relays. These are particularly handy for powering mains powered applications such as um, vacuums, dust extractors, all of them kind of things. Anything that re requires some volt free switching. The connectors, it's got a 16 amp relay inside but these connectors are rated to 10 amps. If we flip the unit over to the other side, we'll start at the bottom, we've got another little isolated bubble and this is the MOSFET area. Now this can be driven from a completely separate potential uh, through this port, again anywhere from 9 to 36 volts and we've got two MOSFET outputs. We'll go in a bit more detail a bit later of what these are and what they can do but these are great for driving solenoids or lights or anything that requires switching a load on or off. A bit further along we have got a little switch here, I will talk about that in a bit more detail later on in this video but that selects the reference point for all of these six stepper motor ports. Now you'll notice that there is no bubble around this port and that's because it's specifically designed to drive opto isolated external stepper motor drivers. I'll go through an example on how to wire up one of them but there is a lot more information in the wiki because this supports both common anode and common cathode stepper motor arrangements. A bit further along we've got two uh, buttons, these are used for reprogramming if it gets stuck. One's a reset and one's a button to put it into programming mode. And then on the bottom edge here we have got our laser port. This just provides some non-isolated discretes, particularly handy if you want to control a laser or your spindle with discrete control. Um, I will have a video shortly showing you the conversion to put a laser head on the Route 4 light and controlling it with the Route controller. It's actually very good. I've really enjoyed uh, playing with a laser and I think I'm going to make a machine specifically designed to have a laser head. 
And then the next isolated bubble is this isolated 48, RS485 port. Now this is powered from your VFD spindle in most applications, but provides a isolated Modbus RS485 interface between your controller and your VFD. Um, it works great, um, I had no issues with it, and it provides that peace of mind that no electrical noise from your VFD can interrupt your controller from working. Uh, later on at the end of this video I will show you the inside of it because I know some people are particularly interested on the inner workings and I'll go through explaining a bit about the circuitry and what goes on inside. Right, now for basic configuration. What's in the box? When you receive your root controller you will get the controller itself, an antenna and a test specification sheet to say that it has been internally tested before shipping. In this instance, the serial number 40 passes. When you first get it, you won't be able to connect via USB. Well, you could plug it in, but it won't show up on your computer. You need to connect an external power source. Now that is done through this port here. And typically what I do is I provide a 24 volt source into here. I normally use one of these OEM style 24 volt power supplies like this one and wire in to that connector here. Like so. You might be thinking this is an overkill power supply. Yes, you're right, this is like a 300 watt power supply. It is not needed, the root controller only consumes roughly seven watts, depending on what peripherals you connect to. But I like, this is a leftover power supply from a previous project. And what I tend to do is power the root controller and the stepper motor drivers themselves through this one power supply. From here, we can get our USB cable. I'm using a type C to C, if you can see that. And then from there, we can plug it into our controller and to our PC, which I'll do in a second. Applying power is as simple as putting 24 volts in. And to see if the root control is on, there is a blue LED power light here. You might notice there is a separate power island for the RS485. And when you apply power here, you'll get a blue power indicator down the side, very similar to this one. At this stage, you plug it into your PC, it will come up as a COM port and we can configure the root controller. So let's go and grab a stepper motor driver and stepper motor and let's configure that axis. Right, in this example, I'm going to use a DM542T stepper motor driver. This is an opto isolated stepper motor driver, which is perfectly designed for the root controller. And to connect one of these up or to connect any axis up, it's a very simple wiring. You need step direction and enable and a reference point. For this driver, we can see we've got access to both the anode and cathode of the LED that's in the opto isolator itself, which is great. I've gone through and connected all the cathodes of them together. So there have been naught volts and then I've wired the um, pulse direction and enable signals through to the connector and we can connect it into our root controller. Let's, let's take the X axis and plug it in. Now, whenever you see an electrical cabinet, you think, oh, that looks quite complicated. But in fact, uh, for each axis, it's just a duplication of this wire, just through each individual port and the software will be configured depending on what type of axis you've got. You can gang them together. So the root CNC typically uses two Y axis motors and there's other machines out there that gang both X and Y together uh, to do that type of motion. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna use the same power supply to power the root controller and the stepper motor driver itself. So we plug that in. And then we have got our stepper motor, like so. At this point, we have got a very basic one axis CNC machine. And this will, we can configure the controller and we can drive this perfectly. So let's hop over to the PC and let's go through how we, one, flash the controller to the latest software manually upload its config and change it as we wish. The root controller comes pre-installed with Fluid NC already, but it's always good good idea to download the latest from their GitHub page. 
To do so is very simple. All you need to do is go to the releases tab and download the latest release. For me, I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna download the Windows 64 zip here and extract it into a folder. I've already done so, and the files will look something similar to this. You'll see there is a number of files and we're interested in the install wifi.bat file. If we double click that, it will open up a terminal and start programming the root controller. Whilst that's programming in the background, I wanna quickly show the config file and a bit of information about it. So what we're doing is loading Fluid, Fluid NC onto the root controller. This is the software that runs on there, but we need to add a configuration file on how to define the machine, i.e. what motors are connected, in what ports, what input and outputs. And to do so, you do that with a YAML file. And here is the example we're going to load onto the root controller. So first off, we've got a couple of uh, stuff that's needed. So we've got um, name, board. We're gonna be using uh, shift registers for our output. So we need to use the I2S stream function. Uh, and down here, we define what pins they are. We've got the SD card defined here uh, and what pin it sits on and any um, macros or buttons that associate with safety doors, macro feed, hold, all that good stuff and uh, any coolant, mist, flood that we might have. And down here we could have macros and such defined. Later on in this video, we're gonna change these uh, pins to be a lamp and a LED. So we'll come back to this configuration and try again. But for now, we've only got one axis. We're gonna connect our motor to the X axis and it uses the following pins. You will notice that I haven't got any limit pins set here because it's just a demo. So let's get this loaded onto the root controller. To do so, uh, once the programming's done, it will load up fluid term. And here, I've, this PC's got two terminals. So let's go ahead and press one for COM port six. And it gives us a couple of commands. We want to upload a new configuration, so we need to press Control U, and then double click our YAML file. Hit enter, and that will start to upload. Now it's uploaded and if I click Control R and restart the board, you will notice that it is using a different YAML file. Um, I've already been playing around on this um, controller. The information does persist unless you do a full arrays. So we're gonna tell it that the new configuration. So we are going to type in a command called um, config forward slash file name equals demo underscore x dot y a n o and we've got okay now if we restart the board we can see that the configuration is now using the demo underscore x configuration file and we have got a standard motor connected to x which is great now what we can do is uh, connect to our wi-fi I find it personally easier to do it through the terminal, but other people's mileage may vary. If it doesn't connect to a Wi-Fi network, it will open up an access point mode where you can connect to it through your phone and add your Wi-Fi credentials there and then. But whilst we are here, we can easily add it. And you can see we are connected, perfect. And we can control our machine from here. With Fluid NC configured with our demo script, we can now control it via Wi-Fi. As you can see, the USB lead has been removed and I've connected to it through my phone. If I go ahead and move the X-axis, you will see the X-axis motor rotate and to add more access is the same as adding more hardware and updating the configuration file and re-uploading it as before. Now let's go and add some IO to it, more specifically the MOSFET and the relay portion. So for this demo, you just see me configure Gerbil to have a mist and flood outputs. And for the two, I used one of the MOSFET ports and one of the relay ports. To show the MOSFETs working, I'm gonna connect a 12 volt supply into the isolated MOSFET area, along with an LED strip. 
and for the relay demo I'm going to use the LED mains LED that I used in the previous Rev2 demo and that's going to be plugged in via a plug into the main switched via the root controller right let me get this plugged in and we'll go for a demo right so what we have here is 12, uh, 24 volts sorry 12 volts going in here and we're going to turn the LED strip on and then we've got our mains potential switched here right with us connected to the web page you can see I've got some buttons for flood and mist if I toggle them you can see the relay will operate and if I do the same again for mist you can see the MOSFETs are switching So the relay is switching mains and the MOSFETs are switching 12 volt, anywhere up to 36 volts. Lastly, end stops. I've got an example here of a MPN style inductive sensor. These can plug directly into the root controller with just the V in, ground and the signal. Now these just plug directly in and we'll start detecting any ferrous. Or any metal. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And it's as simple as updating the config to accept the end stop and marry that up with an axis or macro or uh, any other button like feed hold, halt, door. And there you have it. That is one example of the root controller. Now, if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, and if you're interested in any of the Root CNC stuff, we've got an active Discord channel linked down below where you can join us on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, on GitHub. And if you, yeah, if you'd like to make one, the files are open source. They're downloadable on Thingiverse and GitHub. The GitHub tends to have the latest information and is PRable. And if you need more information on how to configure the root controller, please check out the wiki uh, link down below. It's got useful information. It's got all the pinouts and how to guides on how to get your root controller up and running. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. There's me rushing you off. I did promise early in this video a quick peek inside of what, in, what is inside the root controller. Here we go. So a quick walk around. Down in this corner we've got our MOSFET area. It is internally fused, so if you ever did um, short circuit or blow up one of these, it's more likely to be the fuse to so pop the lid off and put in a new automotive blade style fuse. Along the bottom, we have got our two relays. And again, our internal fuse for our V in input, the one that pa the power goes through this connector. Here is our local isolated 5 volt power supply. And then our downstream 3V3 here. Along this ed edge here is the input isolation. You can kind of make out the silk screen trace running along and under here. That just denotes where the V in isolation is. We've got some LEDs down in this corner here. Our SD card, isolated USB device, USB to serial, ESP32, an expansion header. Hang on, let's try and get this out of the way. An expansion header in this top corner here. Isolated RS-485 with local power supply in this top corner. And then down this side here, we have got our shift registers and our output buffers that will drive those opto-isolated drivers. And then our ref select switch down the bottom. So, that's the inside. And I hope you like it. Oh, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, the link is down in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.